Welcome to Kitchen Basics 101, where I teach you the bare bone basics as if you have never cooked a day in your life from the perspective of a mom. I have a request here for shepherd's pie. We're going to do like American style, so it's not going to be like super traditional, but it'll be easy and you'll be able to do it and it's going to be delicious as we start moving into the fall. Okay, step one is you're going to peel your potatoes and cut them up because we're gonna get our mashed potatoes going before we start the rest of it. Because I'm just cutting up the potatoes, you don't have to cut them up. I mean, does it cook quicker? Yeah, but we're gonna be doing a bunch of other stuff. So you could just put the potatoes in the water whole. I like a lot of potatoes, so I did about five potatoes, but you could do four, um, it doesn't really matter. I always cook my food in water that I'm willing to drink because my food is gonna soak it up. So I have a Berkey filter, this is filtered water. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of salt, probably like mm, a teaspoon maybe. And I'm going to put that on my back burner because I'm going to need my other burner to make my beef. And I'm going to let this come to a boil uncovered. Moving on to our meat. Traditionally, this is done with ground lamb, um, but that's probably not what most of you have had. So I'm going to use ground beef here. This is one and a third pounds. I use that much because that's how much comes in the packages from Costco. You can use a pound up to two pounds. This is a very, very flexible recipe. This is supposed to sort of be like using up your leftover type meal, um, which a lot of great like uh, peasant food meals are. And it's just so good, right? Like if you have leftover mashed potatoes, then you could make this dish, right? So we're just going to break this up and brown it up using into our meat. Let's do salt, obviously. And a little salt. Uh, let's do some pepper. Now everybody's grinder is different. I get a lot of comments that like, it seems like a lot of salt, but I've measured and I could do like five, six grinds and it's not even a teaspoon of salt. So I think it just depends. And then we're gonna do garlic powder, again, just like how much, um, I don't really measure, I do like, you know, scotch, this is thyme, and then we're going to do parsley, a little bit more parsley, because that one's all gone, I had to guess, I would say it was about two teaspoons of, um, Parsley, thyme, garlic powder, one to two teaspoons, depends on how much meat you're doing. And I would say one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper, if I was guessing, which I am guessing because I don't mention. Uh, traditionally, like I said, this would be lamb and actually you would first saute your onions, celery, and carrots. That's a mirepoix. That's traditional. We're not gonna do that here today. We're gonna do peas, carrots, corn. And we're just gonna use a frozen mixed bag of veggies. So we're gonna throw that in after our meat is all um, cooked up here. So that's just sort of, I think, more of the American twist. And I'm not gonna use red wine. Uh, my family doesn't really love that flavor, but you could use red wine. I'm gonna use instead um, better than bullion beef. And you would use like a beef broth to give this a sauce. And remember, all that seasoning you put in when you guys think, oh my God, so much seasoning. It has to season the broth, the wine, the meat, the potatoes, the, like everything in the dish. So you, you need quite a bit of seasoning on your meat. Already smells incredible. We're gonna put some tomato paste. Just like a good squidge um, of tomato paste tablespoon or two and we're gonna saute I made a little well in the middle because we're gonna saute it up just a little bit better than bullion beef I love this stuff so tasty has so much flavor but it's strong so we're just gonna put a tablespoon in here okay then this is where you would add beef broth to deglaze the pan but um I don't have any so I have some leftover chicken bone broth. I'm just gonna use that. We have a lot of meat flavor here, so don't worry. It's still gonna be meat forward. But in a perfect world, I would use um, beef stock, okay? And we're just gonna deglaze the pan with however much I have left here. Cup, maybe. Mm. 
cup and a half maybe. At this point that I realized I forgot to make the roux. So before I added the chicken, or not chicken stock, supposed to be beef stock, I should have put some flour on here to make a roux. So I'm just gonna make a quick little roux to the side. I'll show you. My gluten-free girlies, you could put a cornstarch slurry in here. You just wanna thicken it up a little bit and make it sort of like a gravy. So uh, you just a roux is just equal parts butter and flour. So I've got my butter here. A uh, tablespoon, and I'm just gonna let that warm up for a second. Then I'm gonna put a tablespoon of flour in. There. Bring it over to show you because the way I got my camera set up. So tablespoon of flour, a tablespoon of butter, and I'm just going to heat that in a pan for a couple of minutes. Like I said, this is my screw up. You shouldn't have to make a roux. You would just put the flour on the ground beef before you add the liquids. But this is an important lesson. Like it doesn't always go perfectly. And learning how to adjust and adapt when you're cooking to fix the dish is a huge part that chefs learn, okay? So we're just making a roux here, a simple roux. So this is just about ready. You're gonna cook this for just a minute or two. Um, you don't have to get any special color on it. You just wanna get that raw flour flavor cooked out of it. And we're gonna add it to our pot this little extra step didn't scare anyone away from making it because you normally wouldn't have to do this so i'm just going to add my roux right here to my pan and this is just going to help thicken up my sauce and like i said this is flour so for my gluten-free girlies i don't know if gluten-free flour works to make a roux but i know that cornstarch will work to thicken this up slightly slightly different flavor but in my opinion gonna be fine okay so i'm just gonna mix my roux in here and I'm gonna let it boil for another minute or two and just let all the flavors combine and let the roux start thickening the sauce. Immediately see the difference. I mean, look at this. This is like thick, delicious gravy. Now, I always taste, um, you should taste as you're going through. See how your seasonings are? Oh my God. I was thinking to myself, oh, a touch salty. And then I remembered it's gonna have to hold up to a whole bag of mixed veggies. So this is gonna steal a lot of the salt away. We're going to add our bag of mixed veggies in, stir it up, a casserole dish, and we're going to put our meat and veggies in the bottom. If I grated cheese, but I'm going to grate my own, I'm going to use this cheddar because, you know, it's Irish. People love to see the grater in action. I do too. Quick work. Very quick work. This is a seven ounce block of cheese because we're just going to put it over the top. So, like you saw, I and mean, that was, I don't know, 10 seconds and it's done. Meat, mashed potatoes are butter and sour cream. That's how I do them. So I'm gonna put one stick of butter in here and I'm gonna put probably like mm, a half a cup of sour cream. You can usually tell if my potatoes are done based on being able to break them up with my spoon. If you want more of a restaurant smooth style, then you can use a ricer. I like them to be a little chunky, so I use a masher. This is the point where I would preheat my oven to 400 degrees and of course I'm gonna taste. I tasted and I felt like it needed just a touch more butter. This is salted butter, so that's where my salt's coming from too. It's too hot here in Vegas. Now we're gonna spoon that mixture over the top. Additionally, there's actually an egg yolk in the potatoes, but we're not doing that. We're gonna top it with that beautiful cheddar cheese and we're gonna pop it in the oven just so it gets melty and bubbly. I might've put a tad too much cheese. It's gonna take a minute to cool off. It's currently molten cheese lava. Still molten lava, but my husband is circling like a shark, so let's, get a piece out and taste it so that he can get to eating. Okay? If you let it sit here and cool for a few minutes, it will hold up into like, you know, a little slice, but it's molten hot, so it didn't, but let's taste it and see what we're working with. It's hot, ha <laughs> ha, it's hot. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die so hot. Oh, um, definitely let it sit up and tighten up and cool off a little bit before you eat it. Mm. Mm. 